Welcome back to another episode of Jimmy Repeat, the podcast. Today we have on Kyle Farnsworth. He's a retired Major League Baseball player. He was a pitcher. He's pitched in over 893 games. He played for 21 years. Uh, he has a fastball like, like none other, up to 101 miles an hour. He was only four miles an hour shy of the record of, at the time. He's also played semi-pro football for the Orlando Panthers for four or five years. He's won two national titles, been selected to two All-Star games. He was leading, he led his team in sacks and tackles in 2015, then turned bodybuilder in 2022 and competed in Classic Physique in the Shuru Classic. And he took first place in Novice, first place in Open, first place in Masters. We have this all-around genetic anomaly who's capable of whatever he sets his mind to at this point. I don't know if there's anything that, that could stop him. So I don't know if this was a, a, a gift that he was born with or if it's something that he's worked towards. So we're going to find out today how he just yeah. keeps excelling at everything that he does. Welcome to the show, Kyle. How you doing? Doing well. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, this is great to have you. You know, I was looking through your bio and I'm like, I I'm, I'm so impressed by everything you've accomplished that I'm like, I, I don't know where to start. So I took pages and pages of notes and, you know, I came up with things that I definitely want to know. I came up with some things that I think others want to know, especially in the bodybuilding world. Um, you know, bodybuilders are often looked at as, you know, like, like a big mama Luke, like, you know, and, and as a baseball player, we didn't, you don't want to be that, right? Cause you're no. not going to, you're not going to perform as you should. So let's, let's, let's go back. So pre 1995, before you get drafted, you were a high school standout. Um, I don't, I, t I got cut my junior year in high school from the baseball team. So, um, you know, I was always very athletic, you know, I played baseball, basketball and football and, um, you know, I was a tall, lanky kid, you know, I was probably six, four, 175, 180 pounds soaking wet. So, you know, I, I was, I had ability and, you know, very athletic, like I said, but very, very thin and slender. So, um, you know, I ha definitely had the ability, and I think I topped out at 90 in high school. So that was definitely, you know, had what scouts were looking for. It was just very fortunate that, um, you know, the Cubs saw that potential in me and drafted me, you know, in the 47th round, just gave me an opportunity. Wow. That's 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 great. So I know, you know, there were some guys I played uh, uh, ball with growing up. Matter of fact, they got drafted to Chicago, and uh, one of the guys was a first baseman. And he too, he was tall, he was lanky, um, but he could hit like no other. He was fast, he was agile, he had everything that you'd want. And after his stint there, he came back. He looked like a monster, you know. <laughs> he put so much into his training to to really add that size that is even needed in baseball. Mm -hmm. What was your training like going from from you know high school to to the major leagues to try to add some size? In high school, I never really lifted, you know, back then, um, it was kind of frowned upon just for the reason of just getting, you know, the old saying, oh, baseball players are going to get too tight and right. be, be flexible. Um, you know, and I took martial arts as well um, as a kid, so I was very flexible as well, which I believe helped me a, a whole lot in my career and staying healthy and being able to, you know, throw the ball as hard as I could and stuff like that, so... Um, I probably really didn't get into lifting until my freshman year at junior college at Abraham Baldwin Agriculture College is where, you know, because there we had mandatory lifts, so we had to lift every day. Right. And, you know, it was still kind of new to me, but, you know, I enjoyed it. And then I saw myself getting stronger. I saw my velocity increase in miles per hour as well. And to me, it was, it was, I felt, I, I enjoyed it. I started to see in muscles that a little skinny kid never had to. So right. that, that was cool. And, you know, I just fell in love with it and just, you know, that's basically where it started um, there and just, you know, progressed throughout the minor leagues. And, and I think, you know, then I, when I got to the minor league ball, I was there by myself. I was a real quiet, shy kid. I didn't hang around. I didn't really drink. And so I was like always in the gym uh -huh. lifting. So that's why I, I, I just spent most of my time. <laughs> And did that did that carry over <laughs> into uh, the major leagues? Where you, did you did you keep up with with a rigorous training schedule? Or you know, once you hit the majors, I mean, there's so much travel involved, and you yeah, know, you're, you're working out at hotel gyms. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of work. You know, so I have a funny story. So in 1995 was my first first pro ball, which was rookie development league, where they get all the new draft kids, 
and they get a lot of kids from you know Dominican Republic and stuff like that. And right. so we were we were down in Fort Myers with the Cubs while they're redoing their facility out in Arizona. So, you know, we we were we did our normal workout in the morning at the field. We worked out through, and we got back to the hotel probably around two o'clock, three o'clock. And now I had nothing else to do. And I go down to the hotel gym, and I'm in there riding the bike. And our pitching coach Oscar Acosta, rest his soul, he was I loved him to death. But he was he was in the military. He was very hard nosed. He didn't hold anything back. I mean, he would tell you. Uh, the, I mean, I could tell some stories about this guy. He was he was ruthless. So the next day, we have a meeting, and he goes off on me because I'm in the gym working out. Oh, so I see I'm not working you guys hard enough. There was a player in the hotel gym working out. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes. So he makes we start running. I'm like mother a uh, fucker, but you know, th- but but that was just me. I was just always wanting to try to get myself better, do something more because at that level, it's it's easy to just do the basic stuff when everybody's looking. It's the stuff that makes you better. Is behind no the scenes. Else, exactly. Doing extra, doing that little bit more that people don't see. Right. So, it, so but to him, you know, is this the way we was? I mean, that's just the way he kind of weeded out for like the weak links also. Uh-huh. And who, people who can handle that kind of, you know, there's no way they could get away with it now, the way he was saying stuff. But, oh, you know. Oh, my God. Everybody go home <laughs> crying now, right? Exactly. So I just took it like, okay, I get it. But, you know, it's not going to stop me from trying to help myself get better. Uh-huh. Now, did you see, so, I mean, you you played for 20 or 21 years. Did you see a shift in the methodologies from when you first started to when you left, you know, when it, in regards to training, how people were training and, and, and working out off of the field? Um, Definitely. I think probably it kind of shifted probably because my first year, no, minor leagues was 95. Then when I got to the big leagues in 99. So probably from not until probably around, I'm around 2005 ish, maybe when guys really started working out more and more and more, and in, including pitchers. Right. You know, a lot, a lot of times, you know, e- even the position players, they really didn't get in the gym that much and, 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 and lift away. They probably do, do now these days. I mean, there was just so much benefit that I saw for myself. Like I said, just staying healthy um, throughout my whole career. I, th- you know, I don't think I had really any injuries. And I contribute that to being in the weight room, especially for my arm. Right, um, right. My el- elbow. I think I tore a flexor tendon when I was, I think, thirty-six years old. That was really the only arm injury that I ever had when uh-huh. I played baseball. So I, like I said, after I, a lot of pitches, correct. So um, <laughs> over a lot of years. <laughs> So did, were you always a pitcher, Kyle, or did you, did you ever play other positions, you know, coming up as a kid or anything? Um, as a kid, I play, you know, I played all over play shortstop outfield catcher. Um, I just wasn't that great of a hitter. Right. So pitching <laughs> but, it was, but pitching, yes, w- was real good. I mean, I had a cannon for an arm in the outfield. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just saw me more as a pitcher. So I mean, it worked for me. Went, went with it. Yep. When did you, when did, when do you think, you noticed or when did people start noticing in you like hey kyle like you know you you really have what it takes like let's let's really pursue this um obviously my dad saw something to me um because when i got like i said go back to when i got cut my junior year in high school you know he went out and found a personal trainer baseball guy instructor um don valentine rest his soul as well he was a military vet also so you know my dad is as well so he found out, you know, he, he knew a lot of connections and he knew his stuff in baseball. And, you know, if, if they didn't believe in me, um, I would probably definitely want to be where I was, you know, throughout my career or had the career I have. So Did you I, believe I, in yourself as you were being pushed and coached? Did you I think knew, like this is something I could really do? I knew I was good, but as far as the extent and how far I could could go, I had no idea. I just know I love, I love, love playing. I love, I could I could pitch well, and to me, I was like, all right, it's either this, work on the far- family's farm up in Missouri, be a farmer, or go to the military. <laughs> is, is that is that so, how you ended up in a agricultural school? Um, because of farming, or in, in a way, but they were also really the only college that was after me. I think Georgia Tech was looking at me, but my grades weren't that good. Right. <laughs> so, and you know, I just and I you know, since I got drafted out of high school by the Cubs. Um, I didn't think I wanted to go to a four-year school just because I was like, all right, let me go to a JUCO first, 
see how it is and then still be eligible to go into the Cubs system after, because we did a draft and follow back then where the team could draft you, right. have your rights for a year, and then either sign you or put you back in the draft until the, for the next draft. So that's what I did, and the Cubs signed me. For, I guess I did decent in, in college and went from there. Good, good. So you've, you've played all these years in, in baseball. Uh, we're going to jump around a little bit here because now after baseball, now now you're playing semi-pro football. Yes. You know, and uh, you think <laughs> as a pitcher, well, shit, maybe you'd be a good quarterback. But it turns out that you you led the league, your, your, the league in tackles and, and in sacks your first year on the field. <laughs> like, how, how did this happen? Like, what made you decide, like, you know what? I'm going to go from the mound to the gridiron. Like, <laughs> Um, I've always loved football. I mean, I, I think that was my sport, especially as a kid growing up. Um, you know, I was really good at it. I loved it. I, I played all over the place. I played defensive end as well, tight end. Um, so, I mean, I think the last time I played per, or like any kind of organized football was probably 1992. I think that was my freshman year in high school. Right. So, and then to backtrack a little bit. So while I was in the major leagues, I think it was around 2002-ish. I had a crazy idea in my mind. I was like, all right, during the offseason, I'm going to try to train and maybe try out, try to be like a Deion Sanders or Bo Jackson, kind of play football and baseball. Right, but right. It, but, you know, it, it never panned out. You know, I just did a little bit of training here and there. So after I got released from Houston in 2014, I was like, you know what? I don't want to look back at my life and go, oh, I wish I would have done this, wish I would have done that. So I came back here to Orlando, Florida, my home, and looked up semi-pro football teams and i found the orlando phantoms i was like all right oh cool they got a tryout coming up in i think it was like september or something uh -huh. i was like i was like all right what's the easiest position for to learn since i haven't played in so long i was like all right defensive end your basic goal is just contain and kill the quarterback i was like right. all right <laughs> no I, I i did that in high school then i did it to paul wilson in a, in a, in a game so for the tackle in <laughs> baseball so um <laughs> So yeah, so I just figured out that was that was going to be the easiest position for me to learn and just to try to you know because I was I was still pretty quick and um, long lane and stuff like that. I just knew I had to put put on more size because I right. was going against you know bigger guys as well. But um, you know, I it was it was a lot of fun and, and I just and, and enjoyed it. Made the team. I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect. I was some old guy out there. And these, young kids at 19 to 25 year old and I'm some right. old guy so it, it was a lot of fun do you do you looking back I mean even though that wasn't even that long ago do you wish you played more football coming up or do you, do you have any regrets for you know leaning probably, more towards baseball probably not uh my dad my dad had good advice back in high school he said baseball is less injuries and guaranteed money so what stay away from football for now and then go for baseball and you know baseball I played for 20 some odd years barely had any injuries five years of uh, playing semi-pro football I blew out my right shoulder and my left knee in oh five Jesus years. so was that at the, was that this at the same time did something happen or were the two separate instances two separate instances I uh, blew my shoulder out the quarterback cut back on me I stuck my arm out tripped him up and he ripped my arm back uh -huh. and then tore it that way and then I blew my knee out in practice at non-contact had a uh hyper or knee dislocation hyperextension. i think i think i saw a picture of that on your oh, instagram God. actually it, it was it was disgusting it yeah was, it looked pretty gnarly oh, that was painful <laughs> <laughs> you so you you finish out your your football career yeah um two injuries and then you decide well now what were you looking for another avenue of, of you know physical activity or was it like a was it a bucket list or another goal of yours to to get on stage as, as a bodybuilder? Um, no, I've always watched you know coming up in the minor leagues and stuff like that. I think that was the era when you know got Ronnie Coleman, Flex Wheeler, uh, Paul Dillett, um, Dorian Yates, Cormier, all those guys. Kevin Everyone says that's, that's the greatest era oh, ever goodness. of bodybuilding. Oh, I believe so. This is how aesthetically pleasing and this proportionate they were. And just, just so I was, you know, I followed, especially Ronnie, just, I mean, just a monster he was. And I would, then that's when I started doing like workouts like them in the minor leagues. And I would talk to my strength and coach and we would, they were awesome about trying to incorporate certain work workouts and stuff. But, uh -huh. you know, so that's kind of where I got the idea 
or just the enjoyment of, you know, it also started a little bit earlier, but as far as working out about how, how you can just see your body change and how you could design it in almost your own, own personal way. And it was just pretty cool just to be able to see like the Greek, Greek statues, how they just chiseled bodies and stuff right. like that. So it, it all just kind of starts and started from there and just progressed along. And then when I'm, you know, done with everything, I was like, I'm in the gym all the time. I've always wanted to try to compete just to see what would happen. Uh-huh. You know, I'm, I was, you know, for, yeah, 46 at that time last year. So I was like, you know, wh- why not? You know, I'm, what's the point of going to the gym? And I need, I, for me, I needed a purpose. Right. You know, I'm not just, just to go to the gym just to lift weights for what? Just cause? No, I wanted to have a purpose, have, have a goal. It's like, let me see how far I can do this, how uh-huh. p- push my body and just to compete against, you know, just another th- thing to accomplish. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I really like what you said, how, you know, noticing how your, how your body changes and how you could really carve out the look that you're looking for Yeah, you know, in bodybuilding. You know, you have, I think you have two different schools of thought. You have the people that are like, Oh, well, this person is genetically gifted and that's why they have these great lines and great insertions and you, know, everything is so proportionate. And then you have the school of thought, which I lean towards, which also sounds like you lean towards, is I believe we can go in the gym and we can create our own masterpiece, right? And design yep. and build our body to look a specific way. Um, you know, bodybuilding is is really an art form as much as it mm-hmm. is you no know, competition or a sport. It is an art form, right? So if you get on stage and you're lacking a body part, how do you change it? You don't just suck it up and be like, oh, well, this is all I, all God gave me, so fuck yeah. it, this is it. No, you go back <laughs> to the gym and you work on that to bring up that body part. So I really like that. So. Did you have like you know being a pitcher like you know you're you're conditioned differently than than a bodybuilder? So was it tough for you to bring up some parts? Were you did you have a struggle yeah. there? Or I think the the hardest part was you know my legs have always been there. I've always killed my legs. They've always been a strong part of mine and my upper body. You know I lifted heavy and stuff like that and hard. But again, it goes back to I I couldn't get too big. Or I wouldn't be able to stay flexible and long and loose and be right. able to be 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 free for pitching wise. So my upper body was always was la- lagging, obviously. Um, but you know, I you know I had has always worked hard at it and just tried to bring it up as much as I can. My triceps, my chest have always been a, seem like a weak point. They just don't want to grow. Right. I mean, I look at my calves, look at weight, and they just grow. So it's like what it's like it's what it's like people what want calves and they can't get them and then I don't I don't do nothing and I have them I, I'm just lucky like that but then like I said my chest and triceps they they're a pain in the butt but you know that that's what it's you no know, it's awesome about it you know you can go in there you can see see that see what's lagging they're like okay judge will tell you okay this is what you need to do to get better to add proportion add size. So your body's more symmetrical, you know? So right. that's, you know, again, that's what's awesome about bodybuilding is that you can be able to do those kind of changes and still be successful. Like in pitching, you know, if I had a great fastball, you know, I could, I could destroy people with it. Then, and, and, you know, and a slider, I believe. Yes. <laughs> it and, worked and, pretty good too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. So you, you, you weren't <laughs> just a, a one tool pitcher there. You know, I said it before. It is almost like you hit like the genetic lottery, you know, being as talented as you are and succeeding in, in, in multiple sports, you know, and, and having, you know, a multidisciplinary athlete doing so well, like some guys could do well at one thing and they're just okay at others, right? You're, right. you're, you're really hitting the mark in, in all of the things that you're doing. What is it that you're doing different or, or yeah, yeah, different, I guess. Like what what is it that you do? that allows you to be at the top of your game through multiple sports? I think it's just, it's a, it's a mental aspect and thought process. Cause I've seen there, there were guys that's baseball wise who were more talented and had more ability than I, I did, but I could, you could see that they didn't put a hundred percent into their craft. Um, for, for me, yes, I had to have ability, I had ability, very genetically i i do i'm i always have been very lean that's weird because my brothers are both kind of a little fluffy as fluffier <laughs> so i don't know i don't know how i got you know the more leaner side but uh. you know that part of it but still you can still have all those tools you can still be 
the genetic freak. You can still have a cannon for an arm, run like the wind. But if you don't put 100% effort into your training, into your nutrition, into taking care of your body in baseball, taking care, taking notes, watching video, doing all these things like in, in bodybuilding, nutrition, rest, you know, all this stuff, <laughs> you're not going to be able to reach your potential, whether you're a genetic freak or not. It, it's just right. almost impossible. If you put 75% in, you're going to get 75% no matter what. Right. So you get out what you put into it, right? Exactly. So, but if you get those freaky athletes, they put 100% into it, then you see what, how ridiculous the human body can do, what they can do and become when, you, when freaks like that actually put 100% into everything. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're a little bit older than, than most of the guys that you're competing with on stage. So are, are you, do you prioritize recovery more now at your age or do you just say, you know, fuck it, I'm 100% all in all the time? <laughs> Um, recovery. And I think my conditioning probably is probably something else I really need to pay attention to as well. Just as far as, you know, just trying to, no, I do stay lean, but I was at, at content, you know, just everybody at that age is going to have a little bit more at around their waist as well. So conditioning wise, it's a little bit, was a little bit harder for me to do the cardio and stuff like that, right. but it's a, um, it, it gets a little monotonous, right? Yes, <laughs> very, very much so. So, but as far as the intensity of my workouts are always pretty, pretty intense. Um, I, there's rarely any time I go in there and just try to or to go through the motions because you're just wasting your time. Right. It's because I mean everything has to be. You have to focus on the squeeze, the contraction, the extension, get the full range of motion, doing all this every single rep. That's what. It's the little things, just like in baseball. It's the little things that matter. This, which I'm starting to find out, bodybuilding too. It's making sure you eat every two to three hours. Making sure you put the right things in your body this time and this time and this time. Like in baseball, it's like, oh, I got to get extension. I got to finish out front with my fingers. It's those little things that make that huge difference, as opposed to just halving it. If it, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. So your off season training in in baseball or football or bodybuilding always differs than what you're doing in season are you seeing any any correlation uh or similarities between what you do in your off season now versus what you did playing baseball or football um it, with baseball in the off season i i lifted pretty pretty heavy e even upper body when i could uh you know i threw all the time which helped me you know stay loose and flexible so then when the season came along I would tone it down just a little bit for upper body, but I would st still stay pretty solid with my lower half just be because I've, for me, for some reason, I, I, I could get away with that. I don't know why, uh -huh. uh, but I would, I would break it up kind of like, cause I worked out with a bodybuilder, I think back in the two thousands and kind of got like a little program, you know, I'd break it up in body parts as well. Uh -huh. um, like chest, legs, arms, back. And I kind of stuck with that throughout the baseball career as well. And I think that helped too. And I would stay lighter, but in the off season for baseball, you know, I definitely changed it and turned up the intensity a lot. And then same thing with football. When I, when I went to the football aspect of it, I knew I had to get bigger and stronger up top. My lower, right. like I said, my lower half was good, but I had to get stronger. So that's when I started you know, bar benching more because baseball, I did a lot more dumbbells or machines just right. to pr protect my shoulders. Safety the aspects of it, right. Correct. Yeah. And then, so with football, I started, yeah, started just doing more overhead presses, some clean and jerks, you know, just more power, explosive movements and stuff like that. More of a football geared type of, of, of training regimen. Right. Yeah. So, uh, this year in your off season, you competed last year, you qualified for nationals, obviously. Um, is that something you're going to try to pursue? Or are you going to get back on stage? Yeah. So, just got dealing with a terrible shoulder injury. <laughs> right. You just came off. You just came off of surgery, yes. right? Yeah. So I blew was my that shoulder. Your, was that your throwing arm, by the way? No, I, I blew that one out five years ago. So okay. I did, now now I did my left one. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened? How, what happened? How'd you hurt it? Oh goodness! This is don't don't laugh. So about three years ago, uh, we're at the lake and we we put this tarp on the dock for a slip and slide. <laughs> this is where it all starts to go wrong. <laughs> and right, right at the end of a dock, they had a little, like a little two by four. So it was like a little lip. Right. And I didn't, so I went head first 
as soon as I landed, my palm hit that lip and it jammed and ripped my arm backwards. Uh, as, as soon as I laid, as soon as it happened, I fell in the water. I was like, that, that's not good. Is, is there and, a video of this? Can we get video of this? Actually, I think there is. If I can find it, I will send it. Yes, definitely send it to the producer. We need to add that in. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was so that was about three years ago, it, and it killed. So it was just, and it got better. I, you know, did my re or like rehab stuff. So I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. it, it felt it felt good. And then I went and did a uh, Yankees fantasy camp in January. Yeah, and it was aching and. You know, we're we're facing the campers, and the guy th throws me a pitch, and we're hitting. So I swing. I'm like, I'm going to hit this one as far as I can. I missed it. Got extension with the bat, and I just stubbed my shoulders. Go. Oh. And I was like, and I was like, oh no. So it was it was down in Tampa, and I finished the bat, got a line drive, base hit. I was like, I'm not coming out of the game. So I'm got a base hit, uh -huh. <laughs> came off the field, and thank goodness my ortho doctor, he was actually with the Rays, uh, Doctor Coco Eaton, who did my other shoulder and my knee. Okay. He's about their office is like 30 minutes from Tampa. So I call him up. He's like, Hey doc, uh, can you see me real quick? I think I just blew my shoulder out. <laughs> He's like, uh, if you can get here about 30 minutes, I'll see you. I'm like, all right. Oh, I get man. there. He checks it out. But yeah. But I well, and then after, after you had that fantasy camp, you had another one you went to though, correct? Well, I did the Bra uh, Braves one first. And then oh, the, the Braves Yankees was first. One. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I had surgery on the tw January 25th and, and this week I started, you know, I tore my bicep tendon in half, mm -hmm. uh, slap, slap tear my labrum and tore my rotator. And this week I was, just started my normal root workout routine, but as a lighter weight, right. you know, 10, we 10 weeks after surgery, I don't, I don't know how f that happened recovering that fast. I mean, I'm, I'm still blown away by it. And, you know, I did awesome rehab, you know, the place here in town, home, home and rehab, they helped me out as well so but i think this is still staying with or while i had my surgery i was still at the gym still doing my break other training uh -huh. still doing my rehab so the other thing i was really doing to focus on is my nutrition staying on top of that and i really think all that helped for how quickly my shoulder recovered well you know it's it's funny you know if you take like a, a non-athlete with that same injury they're out for three four five months Right, they're they're walking around in a sling. They can't do anything. Right. They're afraid to do anything. You look at an athlete, like you guys just come right back, right? There's really yep. there's really no downtime. Stitches are out. I'm good to go. Yep. <laughs> and I, I a lot of that has to do with you know you're so active regularly, so you're you're in a good place when you get cut open. Yeah. You know, so I do think you heal a lot quicker. And paying attention to your nutrition is definitely key, right? Getting all the right nutrients in there. How 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 is your nutrition? regularly aside from bodybuilding you know even during baseball and football did you always kind of keep a clean diet or i, I thought i did until I actually got um into bodybuilding with, into bodybuilding with right. um my my nutritionist and trainer his name's cash gidry and um for the show you know so before i got with him you know i thought i was taking enough you know i was getting enough protein but i was forgetting about the carbs and the good and the fats mm -hmm. and I, you know, and then I would also eat ice cream every night. I'd eat chicken wings and you know, the stuff like that. Right. Well, then I was like, I'm good. This, this, this is the way it's supposed to be. Ronnie Coleman, he ate chicken fingers with barbecue sauce and French fries. <laughs> <laughs> so if he can do it, I can do it too. But that's when I, then, then when I got with cash, then he sent me, you know, the, the plan and everything. I was like, Oh my gosh, I got to do, asparagus green beans what all well, the stuff you this? weren't eating yeah and when i when i started doing that it is like wow i have a whole found new respect you know of bodybuilders and the fitness industry or they got women men and women who do this on a constant basis right people think oh they're just so big old meatheads and this and that oh they do steroids they do. no it's the nutrition you do you have to eat six seven times a day you got to be on it every day, all day, 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's mentally draining. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, it's it, a it lot. Was, yeah. And people don't realize how hard actually, the workouts are easy compared to the eating. That's right. what I that was like, wow, this is yeah, that, like That's a full-time job, right? So if you eat yep. six times a day, right? 
that's 42 meals per week that you need to be 100% with, yep. right? Where your workouts, you're only working out five days a week or six yep. ty- times a week, right? So six times into you know 42 times, yeah, you have to pay attention to, to that nutrition, right? Because it's, mm-hmm. it's every couple hours, you're just over and over and over again. You have to be spot on. Yep. And then, and then especially with my age, like I said, I was competing against younger kids, or I'm not going to say kids, young, young, younger, you know, uh, competitors. Right. My first show, you know, granted it was novice and open, open and masters were two different categories as well. So, you know, I had to, it's like, all right, you know, I, yes, I'm lean, but I'm also a beginner. I don't, I, I can't eat these Oreos anymore right now or the chicken right. wings and stuff like that. I, and my body's older, so I can't burn burn it off as quick so it's going to sit so i can't afford to do it and so yeah that's when i just realized like this is this is tough this is a lot harder than i thought it was going to be but uh-huh. you know that's what i wanted i wanted a challenge i wanted to see how far i can push myself and to be able to just to do it yeah just because just because i've always like like in, i remember in school like in the science class where you get the pictures of the skeletal system then you get some pictures of the nervous system and then the one that triggered me most was the muscles. Right. Of, you know, you, you get to see, like like you are saying, all the little striations, the insertions, and all that kind of, and for some reason, that's always, always as cool to me. And just to be able to see those on your body and start coming out when you start dieting down, you're uh-huh. like, wow, this is pretty freaking cool how you can just morph your body into that almost same kind of thing. Right. You know, so many people that they get into bodybuilding, you know, and, and all the competitors that I'm around and that I coach, nobody really talks about this. So I'm going to ask you, um, keep in mind, nobody knows that I was going to ask this. <laughs> so you changed your diet, right. To, to be more geared towards bodybuilding, right? So you're Thank eating, you. you know, you're eating much cleaner. You're eating more yep. regular. Did you see a difference in anything else in life when you did that? So did you have more energy? Did your libido change? Did your rest habits change? Like what other positive effects did you notice from eating that well? I, now that you kind of, I think my rest definitely got better. My energy got better because you're eating cleaner and better foods as opposed to what I thought, you know, I was, I was eating burgers, not eat a pizza every now and then, you know, I'd still eat my eggs, eat chicken, eat steak but it wasn't clean clean as right. opposed to now you're i'm eating brown rice 93 7 ground beef egg egg whites um fish asparagus green beans which is a lot cleaner so you feel healthier right and i think yeah i think now as you say that like i said i definitely sleep a lot better i have more energy it feels like my this everything this this feels this cleaner and you just feel better about yourself. So now, now I want to go backwards a little bit um, because I, I do find this part of bodybuilding to be the most important and, and people don't talk about it, right? Like you never even thought about it until right now. So now yeah. if you kept this same type of nutrition style, let's call it, when you were playing baseball, do you think you could have excelled even further because you were getting the proper nutrients all the time, you think that would have changed anything? Maybe a little bit. Um, I think if I would have paid attention maybe earlier on in my career to more like video and scouting, that would have helped as well. But definitely, you know, definitely nutrition, you know, just for the like, you know, because a lot of the things that people don't understand when for these athletes, I mean, especially for baseball. Just because we play 162 games in like 180 days, you right. know, we we say we travel, we we're playing on the West Coast. We ha- we have to go b- back home to the East Coast. You know, great. We lose, you lose four hours. Right. Guys, still. Then we have a game the next night. So we yeah. get in at four o'clock in the morning. We got a seven o'clock game. So there's rest that you're not, not good. Good rest. There's a lot of guys don't eat well. So there's two main keys right there for body performance. Yeah. Re- rest and nutrition. And if you don't do those and doing that six months out of a year, that kind of travel, it wears on you. So, yeah, I mean, it's you. now it went to a question you were asking about lifting wise. 
when did I see a shift in the change? Mm-hmm. Kind of around the same time is when a lot more the nutritionists started coming into clubhouses and started changing diets for teams just for that reason, for better performance, because that's right. when they started figuring it out. And I still remember to this day, my son still remembers this. We were, I think I was with Kansas City during spring training. A nutritionist comes in, you know, guys are drinking sodas like they're nothing and, and Coke. So I think it was one can of Coke that the guy puts out on the table. He puts, I think, like a big old glass. And I think it was, a, I forget how many, co- he just like, all right, so this Coke right here, and everybody's drinking, he goes, starts getting tablespoons of sugar. It just dumps them into a glass just to show you how much sugar you're drinking every right. time you drink a Coke. I think it was something crazy like 10 to 15 tablespoons of sugar. Yeah, it's insane. And I was like, and my guys son. guys are him multiple times a day. Yep. And my son, I think he was like eight at the time. He still remembers that. And he, he doesn't drink soda probably because, <laughs> b- because of that reason. But she's like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. And, you know, got, but again, the guys, the players that didn't have that, a lot of them don't have that knowledge. No. And then they, when, no. when they see it, they're like, oh, geez, okay. I think, Not, you know, have, why. having the nutritionist in the clubhouse, you know, pushing, you know, more of like performance nutrition, mm-hmm. uh, I think could really change the game. I think it could change the longevity of, of a lot of players. Definitely. Right. And I mean, you're, you're a testament to that, that, you know, you were, you were, you were training and you, you played 20 years. And then, and then four or five years of football, like, <laughs> that's unheard of, right? You get guys, you know, they, they're, they're in the major leagues, you know, five, 10 years, and then they disappear and you sell them, you see them selling, you know, Cadillac somewhere out in Las Vegas. <laughs> You're like, you kept going 25 years, right? Yeah, right. You know, they sell, sell Cadillacs okay. in Vegas, do ED commercials and, you know, Hey, here's my life, <laughs> but you're, you're an athlete and you're, you're still going. Do you, do you yeah. plan on slowing down? Um, I don't think so. I, I I don't know I don't know that word I don't think I've just always been go 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 I mean yes I'm retired somewhat retired or whatever but yeah I <laughs> are you though <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I just I just don't think I could sit still just I don't know if it's because I've been active for so long and it's I've always okay today I wake up like in baseball okay today I gotta go to field and go pitch mm-hmm. today I gotta go do this. So doing that for so long, having to do something every day, yeah, I don't think I could just sit back, relax, and just go through the TV and watch news. Watch you fish? Um, no, I I do more hunting than fishing. Okay, so so that's another hobby. Or I'm not so say are, hobby, are, are that. you? So you're you're in Florida, right? Yep. Are do you take part in like the python hunt out in the in the Everglades? I've always, I've always thought about doing that. I think that would be a lot of fun. If you're gonna do it, I'm coming down. I'm gonna do it with you. Between the the pythons and I guess the wild boar down there, it's just oh yeah, they're all that's got to be a good too. time. <laughs> that's got to be a good time. I'm all about that. <laughs> Kyle, you've been an athlete for <laughs> numerous decades now. <laughs> you know, and you know, oftentimes people, you know, it it might be a short stint. You know, whether it's you know as an amateur or or a professional, sometimes it's just a shorter stint. You know being involved in a, in a particular sport, you know, they, they, people lose interest in it. What has motivated you to keep going for, I don't know, three decades, maybe <laughs> longer. And, you know, was something motivating you standing on the pitcher's mound in front of, you know, 40,000 people and said, saying to yourself, one day I'm going to stand in a posing suit <laughs> in my underwear. on stage. <laughs> so what, what's motivating you to keep you going at this level? Oh goodness! So, yeah, that, I mean that is that's a great question. Um, that's, you know, I think for me, I mean, I think a lot of competitors can probably say the same thing. But as far as you know, trying to push, like I think I've said it before, just seeing how far the human body can go. You know, how far you can push it, what you can deal with. Um, as far as, you know, the pitching wise, I was still learning my last year of pitching just as much as I was my first year. Right. I was learn- learning something every year. That's the only way that you're able to be able to, for one, stay around as long as I did is be able to learn how to adapt, adapt, change and almost reinvent yourself because it's easy. I'm not going to say it's easy to get there. It's easy to get to the league. It's very hard to stay, let alone. Right. You know, I don't like talking about myself, but I stayed for 16 fucking years. Yeah. So, I mean, that's very tough. 
893 yeah. games, 29th all time in MLB. You know, I'll toot my own horn. I, I deserve it. You do deserve so, it. <laughs> you do so deserve I, it. You know, you, you, you have to be that guy, you know, talk, talking, you know, as these guys get drafted, you know, and telling them, like, hey, this is what it takes. This yeah. is what you can do, but you you have to be a student is, of the game. You know, exactly. you have to keep learning. So And, and so, okay, yeah. I, so I, that, I didn't that, mean to interrupt. I was just thinking no, about you're good. that. But, yeah, so that's what I – every year, because the t- other teams, they have scouting reports on you. They're going to adjust on you. If they see you tipping a pitch, they're going to know that. I'm not going to know that. It's my job to figure that out. So, yeah, so it's a constant battle every year, let alone you got guys who are younger that are want your job. So you got guys who w- want what you're doing. So you got to worry. You have that in the back of your mind, too. And you have to, you know, then you have, there's just so much going on, but yeah, it's the little things to be able to, all right, nope, you're, you're not going to get, get my job. I'm going to keep on getting better. You got to right. come, come get me. I've been on that high horse and I've been knocked off on it. I've, I've learned definitely more getting knocked off because that's when you learn the most. Anybody can be good when everything's going. It's when you don't have your best stuff, especially as a pitcher, you never had a hundred percent. No, you, you never did. And then it's about learning how to be successful when you don't. Mm-hmm. And so to be able to push myself and to just be able to do that day in and day out for as long as I did, I just think it was just the mentality of never giving up and just having that fire. And I, I still have it. I still would play if someone would take me. But it's just <laughs> a business. It's, it's just I'm old and probably don't throw as hard anymore in, in the business part of the game is awful now these days yeah but um you know i still love the game that's why i give back to the kids i do these charity things and go to little leagues and help them out and try to teach these young kids you know they may not know this at that young of an age but just to be able to spread that kind of knowledge so that they don't run to those kind of roadblocks to help them along the way Mm -hmm. and then as far as the bodybuilding thing the last sets and stuff like that you know i think it People may think it sounds kind of crazy, but those last few sets, in my opinion, when you're really pushing through, that's when you really get that growth. You get that, you know, you get those little little cuts that show up eventually. You yeah. know, anybody, anybody can do, do 10 easy sets. Okay, cool. That's good. Well, which that's that you're just warming up. You're not, your muscles aren't getting taxed. They're, they're not getting torn apart, really. Right. Until you start tearing those fibers, that's when they get their that growth. They start growing, start get bigger, better, more defined, and stuff like that. And like I said, I'm all new at the bodybuilding thing and stuff like that. I got a lot to learn. And, you know, it's been a lot of fun. And that's you know one thing was kind of nerve wracking being up on stage in my underwear. Not <laughs> wait. And, did, and, did you have a lot of friends and family come watch this? Uh, my son. They showed up late. They were. Okay. They said. They said they don't want to have secondhand embarrassment for me. <laughs> <laughs> but all you know right, that, well, that's right. I guess. <laughs> and the other, you know, and and the, the other thing too, I didn't realize how hard posing was. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I did that. That kicked my ass. And and that, as, like you were saying, with physiques, you can have the most pleasing aesthetic looking body, but if you don't know how to present it, you and have show to it not off, present it. Exactly, a guy who was less proportion of something can end up beating you just because you don't know how to present your body so right. that's what you know getting to the bodybuilding sides you know people bash and make fun of bodybuilders because oh they're just this and that yeah they don't realize but, what goes on oh you my, know to actually yes. get to that point exactly just to be able to like i said the diet the training the posing yeah some people might think it's goofy and stuff but that's what it's about it's right how you think, you think it's harder getting ready for a bodybuilding competition than it is getting ready for opening day Heck yeah! Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah! I've, I've done. I've done it. Like I said, I'm. I'm very fortunate. I've done it all, and bodybuilding is definitely probably the hardest thing I've done. Wow, wow! You know, you you mentioned something about you know, like when you're when you're deep into your workout, and you know, when, when those muscle fibers are really breaking down and really being taxed, and you push through. That's what separates winners from losers is yep. being able to push through that, and I think bodybuilding does you know, translate over to, I'm going to say real life. Um, you know, if you're able to get through those hard sets and if you're able to get those meals in when you don't want to and, you know, get (laughs) up and do the cardio and, you know, at the butt crack at dawn, because that's the only time you have to do it. 
I think it really creates great discipline for, for life. Definitely. If you get through the hard things in, in the gym, it'll help get you through the hard things in life. And if you've gotten through hard things in life, you could definitely get through the hard things in the gym. Most definitely. That's that's how you learn. I mean, you just, you can't give up. I mean, they're just saying, just because some things get a little bit tough and taxing, okay, I'm going to quit. Why? Because you're uncomfortable. That's that's where growth to, happens. Exactly. You have to get out of your comfort comfort zone to grow. Or you're just going to be stuck in this little little bubble, which a lot of people are. And I don't, I've never really seen anybody happy who's stuck in their, in a little bubble. No, they're just, they're just comfortable. Just, no, nope, yep. I'm good here. I don't want to, I don't want to get out of the right lane and try anything different. You know, yep. I'm not going to take a different way to work. I'm not going to, you know, put my shoes on differently or wipe my yep. ass differently. Like everything <laughs> I do is just going to remain the same. So I don't over have to experience any discomfort. Yep. You're also, you're also a sponsored athlete with rule yes. one proteins. Yes. Um, how did, how does their product, how, how are they helping you, you know, achieve all this? How long have you been with them? I just got with them after when I won my competition. So I've been with them for what is it, probably six months now. Okay. I, you know, I, I mean, I've tried everything from the old nasty metrics back in the day oh. past, from that, the myoplex to, you know, myoplex I, used to, that used to, <laughs> that mixed very, was, very well. Yes, I, I love it. It was just like the consistency of an actual <laughs> shake. Yep. And guys would make fun of me in the minor leagues because I would carry, I'd buy the box of myoplex and right. I'd actually, and I'd actually travel with my own blender and I'd be, <laughs> guys would make fun of me. I was like, I'm, I was like, I don't care. I'm, this is what I do. <laughs> right. So, but, um, you know, like I guess I've tried so many products under the sun, you know, you know, I'm very fortunate they reached out to me and wanted to sponsor me and, help me out so i mean th their products are awesome uh, they mix well i mean they have everything from from w women's multivitamins men's multivitamins the collagen i use i think definitely help my shoulder to help rebuild as well i mean they, they got everything and, you know they're out of chicago so i think they're kind of like cubs fans as well so it's pretty that cool. helps <laughs> yeah that helps but you so know if, if you guys if you're out there listening definitely check out rule one proteins um you know I i'm a big proponent of you know support those who support you so, you know, they're out here and they're supporting athletes. Let's let's give them a shot and, and see if everybody likes it. Yeah, no, they're I think, awesome. I think that'd be great. Appreciate awesome. it. Kyle, so baseball, it was funny because right before we got on, I was watching the news. I'm a, I'm a news junkie. Um, and they were talking about how baseball is America's pastime, right? And they just have recently changed some rules to try to make the game a little bit better and uh, uh -huh. make it flow better. Listen, I don't know. Listen, I want to get up there. I want to pitch. I want to hit. I want to catch the ball. I want to field the ball. I want to score some runs. Like, I don't know if it, anything really needed to be changed, but baseball's been around for ever, what, 120 <laughs> years? A long time. The Mr. America's been around for 84 years now, and there's, there's wow. a couple of things that they have in common. They both represent, like, Americana, right? And, and what our country, you know, is, is founded on and built on. And we see that through, you know, multiple generations. You know, if it wasn't for, you know, the Mr. America, we wouldn't have all these other things, right? The Mr. America kind of started all of that. And sitting here talking with you, you represent that. You represent that in, in multiple ways that I don't even want Thank to get you. into right now, but you were, you know, avid baseball player, bodybuilder, football like you scream all american man <laughs> right and well, the, the well, thank you <laughs> the, the mr america you know was originally put in place as uh, an alternative to the miss america right we wanted to try to get that american americana ideal man right for kids to look up to and and other adults to even look at and say i aspire to be that man well, obviously, you know, women are involved now and everything like that. But part of being a Mr. America is we want that. We want real role models. And you fit that bill. So with that being said, I'd really like to invite you up to be a guest at the Mr. America this year. Um, I want you to talk to the athletes and, and the fans because you are a great symbol of what our country has to offer, right? You know, you have the strength. You have the longevity. You know, you have that all-American type of persona around you and what you've done you've gone to show that hard work 
and and persistency leads to good things. It is that American dream type story. I don't know if you've ever looked at it like that or have ever realized it like that, but you really are living that dream for so many. So I think it would be good if you came out and, and met some people. I'd love to. I, you know, I appreciate the invite and we're more than happy to do that. You know, it's not, you know, you say that, you know, it's kind of, you know, I have had, had people, you know, some of my followers reach out to me and say, you know, I inspire them, but like you were saying, you know, I don't do that for that recognition. I just, I'm just me being me. So if I'm able to inspire someone to keep on working hard, keep on grinding, realize that everybody goes through ups, downs, hardships, and stuff like that. And, you know, I've had three major surgeries and I haven't, I haven't sat back and, oh, poor me. I have this right. blown out knee, blown out shoulder. Oh, this, I got cut yep. from my junior near high school base. So I'm just going to give up. I'm, oh, poor me. Someone help me. No, you, you got to get up off your fucking ass, pardon my yep. French. Yep. And you, you have to go after your, your dreams, your goals. You have to set them to where they're almost un, unattainable. Or they're not, you know, anybody can, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to take five steps. Or if, if you don't walk, yes, that's when you start little steps. Little steps lead to bigger steps to, to climb those mountains, to get on top. And, and if I'm able to inspire that one person to take that one little step, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, being an athlete, you don't, you don't realize how many people you inspire uh, because it's not often that somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, I saw you 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And I'm doing this because of what I've seen in you. And, you know, I know you were just recently, you were helping out at a local little league with uh -huh. you know, teaching the kids some, you know, warm ups and had a, yep. you know, some pitching mechanics. Those little kids, like you went there, you had a good time. They learned something. You walk away feeling good, but you'll never have any idea on the mark that you left on those kids until, you know, 40 years from now or 50 years from now, when you run <laughs> into one of them and say, Hey, Mr. Farnsworth, you probably don't remember me, but. When I was seven years old, you taught me how to pitch. Yeah. And, you know, now here I am. So I, I, I really like that. I, you know, I want more people out there, you know, inspiring the younger generation, especially with young children, you know, teaching them the proper ways to, to do things and make these games more enjoyable and, and pushing that active lifestyle on them. Yeah, especially now these days, I believe, just, you know, electronics and all that. You no, know, they're great, but I think they're keeping, you know, kids in the home too much you know they're occupying their time on social media this and that as opposed to you know what we're going we were outside 24 7 all basically the time. you know we didn't come home until the parents what did our parents say come home when the lights come on when, when the street light comes on you better be home exactly just be outside and go play and Which i think was a, that's a very that was a very hard thing to do because i didn't know what time the street lights came on i had nothing to check it against <laughs> other than i'm playing i noticed the street light and i said Oh shit! I'm in trouble. I'm not <laughs> home yet. So I don't. I don't know. That was a hard bar to to reach. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's that, and also not babying your kids all the time when they fail. You have to let them fail. Right. Let them let them know that feeling of failure in order to take that step to succeed. Because if if you're a parent and your kid fails, you're like, okay, it's a little, little, little. no. You're like, yeah. Well, why do you think? What do you think happened? This and that. Okay, now let's work on it. I right. think that as well. I mean, I think there's a lot of too much pampering and trying to not, or everybody's too worried about hurting someone else's feelings as opposed to. It, it, and it's a, know, it's a societal thing too. Yeah. You know, you you got to watch what you say. You might get canceled. You know, you have to yeah. watch what you do and where you go and who you associate with. Like, it's 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 absolutely insane. But I think we're, we are uh, raising a society that is. Uh, doesn't have the testicular fortitude as it once <laughs> did. Correct. Um, you know, and, and and you don't learn unless you fail, right? So yeah. I'm all for I'm all for you know positive reinforcement and encouragement and say, hey, you suck today and you got last place, but here's a trophy. I don't yeah. I don't like that. Nope. Um, I'd rather say no, you don't you don't get anything because you suck, right? You have to come mm -hmm. back and work harder. That's what it's all about is is yeah. you know, putting the work in. You got you have to work harder to be better. If you want to be yep. the best at your craft, whatever that is, even if it is playing video games, you have to put the time in and work hard at it. Yesterday, yep. I, I'm outside and I'm cleaning out my Jeep. Um, and I, I guess it's spring break for the, the schools around here. And there's not a lot of kids in my neighborhood, so it really caught my eye. There was three little girls playing across the street on scooters. 
and they were yelling <laughs> and screaming and running around. I've been living in my house for three years. I I've think never... this is the second time I've seen them. <laughs> and I, I came inside and I told my girlfriend, like, you got to come see this. This is crazy. Like, there's kids. You know, yeah, there, there, there's kids out there. They're playing. They're on scooters. They're moving. And, you know, yeah. listening to their, you know, you can hear their conversations, right, about what they're trying to do. And I guess, you know, they're, you know, role playing or fantasizing. They're like, hey, let's go around the corner. Like, it was a big deal for them to go around the corner on their scooters. And they must be, I don't know, seven, eight years old. I remember at like seven, eight years old, like, I was doing some crazy shit. Like, I, I, I definitely was far enough away from my house that I couldn't see my house. Uh huh. Right. Yes. But these little girls, it was a, it was a big deal for them to take their scooter. Mind you, it's a corner house around the corner. <laughs> but I, I was really happy to see that. So hopefully, I don't know. Maybe that's something to come. Maybe more people are going to push their kids outside and, and and get kids more active again. I hope. I hope. Yeah. Just have to get that that fear of. Yeah. This this. Every, I think everybody just lives in fear these days. Yeah, as well. I, I don't know what I don't know what that's about. I remember growing up, like you know, I'd, I'd go to the baseball field on my bike, and I'd have my my glove over my bat, riding my bicycle, and have a football stuffed in my shirt because who knew <laughs> what you were going to do that day, right? We're going to play yeah. baseball, we're going to play football, but you yep. were, you know, you had your bike, you could do whatever you wanted. So <laughs> those I, those always seem like uh, you know the, the good old days. Yes. Um and you know, at, at, for one point in my life, I thought it would maybe. Maybe it's just the neighborhood. Maybe the kids, you know, they're just not into sports around here. Or, <laughs> but no, it's it's everywhere, everywhere across the country. You know, you hear it more and more and more. Um, you know, this year we're actually planning on bringing in a teen division for okay. for bodybuilding and try to get teens more involved. You know, and other organizations they do have it. We haven't had it in a long time. And the Teenage Mister America that was a big deal. You won the Teenage Mister America. Um, yep. So I, I want to put that out there just even if one person shows up just to try to inspire that next generation. Yeah. Just get them going. Yeah. Well, Kyle, this is, this has been great. You know, I, I know that's what you're doing. You're inspiring the next generation for sure. Whether you realize it or not, uh, I'm letting you know you, you definitely are. Well, thank um, you. We'll talk offline and, and make arrangements to get you up here for the Mr. America, which will, awesome. which will absolutely be great. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add and let people know about? How do we find you? How do people follow all of your greatness? <laughs> um, on Instagram, I am the Kyle Farnsworth. On Twitter, I am twenty four underscore seven Farnsworth. Those are my two main social medias. Okay. And, yeah, I know with Roar One Proteins, um, you can use my code Farns forty four for a discount as well. Awesome. Uh, so they're all, they're awesome, and you know, you know, if anybody just, you know, just never give up on yourself as well. Always set your goals. Go after them, you know, do it day by day, write goals down, every day goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, you know, because that, that's how you obtain these long goals is right. with short ones over a long period of time. Right. And, you know, just believe in yourself and go out there and just have fun. Shorter, more obtainable goals lead to those bigger goals. Exactly. Excellent. Great words of advice. Guys, be sure to file, uh, follow Kyle on, on Instagram and Twitter. And feel free to reach out to them, talk to them about Rule One Proteins and everything they have to offer. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Jimmy Repeat. And we hope we see everybody October 6th through 8th in Atlantic City at this year's Mr. America.